Hello and welcome my friends to yet another Red Gaming Tech video, myself and Marta. Hope you guys have missed me while I've been away enjoying a wonderful festival. Still not 100% recovered, so if I'm not my usual sparkling self, that's why. Anywho, we're going to start things off with a little bit of a statement from AMD on the temperatures of the RX 5700. So, obviously, the card has been out for a while now, and reviews have been percolating doing the rounds on the internet for some time, and numerous reviewers noticed that junction temperatures peaked above 100 degrees Celsius under load. And for those of you wondering what that is in freedom units, it is 230 degrees Fahrenheit. And now AMD have published a blog post basically saying, oh, it's fine, guys, it's fine. These temperatures are, quote-unquote, in spec for the RX 5700. And you will, of course, find that linked in the description below this video. So, to give a better backstory to this, AMD have said that it previously relied on a, quote, single sensor that was placed in the vicinity of the legacy thermal diode to measure the GPU core temperature. And that was actually changed with the release of the Radeon 7. And that has what they call, quote, enhanced thermal monitoring. And this laid the foundation, excuse me, for what we see in the RX 5700, which is a, quote, extensive network of thermal sensors distributed across the entire GPU die. And with that in more simpler, clearer terms, where there was just a single sensor, there are now numerous. And the reason they've changed this is because, quote, GPUs were often leaving significant thermal headroom and resulting performance on the table. So, basically, the additional sensors are supposed to help the RX 5700 balance temperatures and performance. And AMD went on to say, quote, instead of setting a conservative worst case throttling temperature for the entire die, the Radeon RX 5700 series GPUs will continue to opportunistically and aggressively ramp clocks until any one of the many available sensors hits the hotspot or junction temperature of 110 degrees Celsius. Operating at up to 110 junction temperature during difficult gaming usage is expected, and within spec, this enables the RX 5700 series GPUs to offer much higher performance and clocks out of the box, while maintaining acoustic and re reliability targets. So, it's not exactly great that we're seeing temperatures that high on the reference cards, but we are seeing AIB's release cards that try to address this issue. For example, Sapphire have released one, and I'm sure numerous other companies have as well. So, if you're concerned about the temperature of your card and you haven't actually purchased one of these yet, I would advise you at least take a look at some of the third-party cards that are currently available on the market. So let's move on from that to some vulnerabilities, unfortunately, for Intel, AMD and NVIDIA. So we have, unfortunately, some pretty widespread vulnerabilities here that have been discovered by researchers at Eclipsium, and you can... Find a link to their report in the description up below this video. They have found issues with more than 40 drivers and they have titled their report Screwed Drivers, which is, well, right on the nose and tells you what it says on the tin, I suppose. So they basically said that they have found severe vulnerabilities in drivers from quote unquote every major BIOS vendors, as well as people like ASUS, Huawei, or Huawei, whatever, which is not exactly great, but. It actually gets worse from there, unfortunately. They've actually been signed by valid certificate authorities and certified by Microsoft, so basically, according to Eclipsium at least, the insecure drivers can be installed on all modern versions of Windows. And they also said, quote, there is currently no universal mechanism to keep a Windows machine from loading one of these known bad drivers. And features specific to Windows Pro, Windows Enterprise, and Windows Server may offer some protection to a subset of users. Now, that is only if your administrator has actually decided to allow the use of these features. So, you might go, okay, 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 so these, these flaws are everywhere, but what actually are they? What are the ramifications of this? And this is what is Eclipsium had to say, quote, Vulnerable or outdated system and component firmware is a common problem and a high-value target for attackers who can use it to launch other attacks, completely break systems, or remain on device for years gathering data, even after the device is wiped. To make matters worse, in this case, the very drivers and tools that we use to update the firmware are themselves vulnerable and provide a potential avenue for, for attack. So... You might go, okay, you've sufficiently got my attention, what do I actually do? And for now at least, 
the answer is just to, to be vigilant. And if you do install driver updates, just be careful, make sure you're getting them from proper sources. And just to be super safe, regularly scan the system for potential threats. And again, they have a very lengthy report, which is in the description below this video. But for those of you wondering who the vendors are actually, who are actually affected, is ASRock, ASUS, ATI or AMD, Biostar, EVGA, GTAC, Gigabyte, Huawei, Inside, Intel, MSI, NVIDIA, Phoenix Technologies, Realtek Semiconductor, Supermicro, and Toshiba. Now, they do say in their report that some vendors who are affected are still under embargo, but you can see a full presentation on the vulnerability in the description, sorry, in the article that they have written, which again is in the description. So if you want to learn more about how this actually works and the nitty gritty and how it was discovered, you can find it there. It's way too lengthy and uh, complex for me to go into in this video. So go check that out if you're at all curious um, about what's going on here. So for our next topic, we're going to move over to the Xbox Scarlet. What we have here is yet more comments from Phil Spencer, who has been quite the chatty fellow as of late, and this time he had an interview with the folks over at GameSpot, and Paul has also written an article on this over on our website, which is redgamingtech.com. You can find that linked in the description below as well. So, during this interview, he touched on some of the features or the focuses, sorry, should I say, of Xbox Scarlet. And he said, quote, I think the area that we really want to focus on the next generation is frame rate and playability of the games, ensuring that the games load incredibly fast, ensuring that the game is running at the highest frame rate possible. We're also the Windows company. So we see the work that goes on for PC and the work that developers are doing. People love 60 frames per second games, so getting games to run at 4K 60 FPS, I think will be a real design goal for us. The thing that's interesting is, this generation we've really focused on 4K visuals and how we bring both movies through 4K Blu-ray and video streaming and with Xbox One X and when games to run at 4K visuals will make really strong visual enhancements next generation. But playability is probably a bigger focus for us this generation. How fast do games load? Do I feel like I can get into the game as fast as possible while it's playing? How does it feel? Does a game both look and feel like no game I've seen? That's our target. And I have to say, sign me up, Phil. Sign me up. Because I've said this numerous times, you probably go sick of me saying it, but I'm going to say it anyway because it's still true. 4K is, is fine. You know, obviously, if I can play a game at 4K on my PC, I'm going to because why wouldn't you? But I care more about frame rate and playability on, on, on any system, console or PC. So if I could choose, I would choose a lower resolution for more frame rate. It's really that simple. So... I'm really, really pleased to hear that that's going to be a focus for them. 4K 60 would be wonderful, but even just, you know, 1440p 60 or some other resolution at 60, fine. That's that's perfectly cool. And, and it, it give people the choice if you want, like we saw with a few games do with the PS4 Pro and X, uh, Xbox Scarlet, sorry. So, really, really pleased to hear this because, you know, we kind of get into resolution war at the moment or with, with the consoles and... That's just not really what I want. Obviously, everyone is different, but if I could play Bloodborne at 60 FPS, I would play Bloodborne at 60 FPS. <laughs> For me, it just comes down to that. So, let me know your thoughts on this one, guys. Do you like the sound of what they have planned for the Xbox Scarlet? To me, it sounds like music to my ears, but let me know your thoughts as we move on to our next topic from Nintendo. And yes, we have more rumours on hardware from the company, but this time a new controller, as we have a new FCC filing that was spotted by members of the Resetera forum. And basically what it is, is a wireless SNES controller for the Nintendo Switch. Now, of course, this is just an FCC filing, so we should take it with the usual pinch of salt. However, they would be... I think pretty smart to release something like this and obviously modern controllers released and classic designs aren't exactly a new thing for the company and I think a lot of people would go for it just for the nostalgia and to have an alternative to the Joy-Cons that isn't just a pro controller would also be rather nice and it's just that extra little bit of nostalgia I suppose you know to play a Mario game with your, with your wireless SNES controller Obviously, we should wait for a release from Nintendo, but you can find a link to the patent, sorry, the, the patent, the FCC filing in the description below this video. So we're going to finish thing up, things up, so to say, on a console note with the PS5. So as we all know, Sony did not 
Dane to appear at E3 this year. And numerous people, including myself, have speculated that we would see their own event, potentially this year, maybe early next year. And that's obviously something they've done in the past. They revealed the Pro at the PlayStation Experience. Now, according to 4chan, yes, I did say 4chan, so the mountain of salt that is currently in your mind, you do need to take this rumour with that amount of salt. Anyway, so according to the poster Ez Tauj, hopefully I pronounced that correctly, they've gotten their hands on some internal planning emails from the PlayStation PR team, and they have information about the next State of Play show and the reveal of the PS5. So, according to this user's information, we're going to see the State of Play show on November the 1st, and it's going to focus on three games, Death Stranding, Star Wars Jedi Fallen Order, and The Last of Us Part 2. So we're going to see a final launch trailer for Death Stranding, and apparently we're also going to get a release date for The Last of Us Part 2, which is apparently going to be May 20th, 2020. Interestingly, we will not see Ghost of Tsushima in the next state of play. Apparently that has been pushed back, so it can be a cross-gen PS5 release. So... Speaking of the PS5, that's going to be a separate event. It is a PlayStation meeting event, according to the same poster. And that is apparently going to be happening on February the 12th, 2020. And this is apparently where we will see the PlayStation 5 being unveiled with several publishers like Ubisoft, EA and so on having already given been given invites to come and show off their games. So let's talk about the, the viability of these rumours. So the games, it's tough to say. Obviously those three games they are undoubtedly going to show more of. And May 20th does seem an odd release out of Last Boss Part 2. But, you know, it's, no, it's possible. Why not? But what we're really worried about here is PlayStation 5. Now obviously PlayStation 5 is not out till next year. Holiday 2020. So a February reveal would actually make perfect sense. It was enough time to build up hype and obviously we can learn more information about the games and all that sort of stuff. Personally I think this sounds pretty plausible but we're going to have to wait and see on how accurate this actually is but let me know your thoughts guys. Do you think either of these uh, rumours are true and if not give me your thoughts as to why. Anyway that is me done for this video. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye bye.